Greetings, uh, my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today, my topic is the pilgrim's return. Yes, I think we all know that in our childhood days, um, you would have read this uh, book called uh, Pilgrim's Progress, written by John Bunyan. And that was a very good, interesting book at that point in time. And you know, like how the person has to go through different trials to finally reach the mountain of God. So that book, it just talks about the various challenges you see as you proceed, as you take the journey towards uh, reaching that mountain of God. But my topic today is the pilgrim's return. My brothers and sisters, the pilgrim's return is how we are going to understand God because our human wisdom in the present times, in this modern world of digital technology, we have achieved so much. Like what we have achieved in the last 20 years, probably the previous uh, 500 years we have not done that or 800 years we have not done that. So the achievement of this generation the access of information, etc., has made things so difficult. I, the book of the Pilgrim's Progress, the John Bunyan's book, people would not even take it this time. The new generation, the millennials, they would not even uh, uh, take time to read that. They will say, no, I think that's not my cup of tea and I can't uh, have the patience to read that, you know. But now, when we look at the pilgrim's return, how we are going to be coming back to our faith? Yes, with all this wealth, all those positions, all those fancy gadgets, all the best things in the world, the best food and the choicest wine, after having everything, if a person feels the emptiness. How is he going to fulfill that emptiness? The only way, the sure way, is the return of the pilgrim to the word of God. The word of God is alive and active as it was the last 1500 years and beyond. Even today it is the same because this is the truth. And this is the reality. Jesus is same yesterday, today and forever. So when he is alive and he is the same, any amount of digital technology, any amount of exploring the universe, going to different planets, getting into different medias, having the virtual world, having virtual speakers, like having virtual persons of our same commonalities, Nothing is going to change because it all has to come back to Jesus. Just imagine this con this pandemic, this coronavirus, how it put a halt to this ever-growing digital technology and this ever-growing feeling of going away from God. Now everything has come to a standstill. God is rebuilding his church. He's building every domestic church. Every family unit is strengthening. And this is the time we need to return. The pilgrims return. Yes, we need to see all those good things in life. They're all good. But we should not make, become slave to them. We should not consider those as, because this physical world is passing. All we have in this physical world is a short span of life. It can go anywhere from 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years maximum, or 110 years, then you have to return back to Him. You need to get back to your eternal eternity. So how are we going to do that? The only way and the sure way is to start from the Word of God. We have the Word of God. We are so privileged and so fortunate to have the Word of God with us. People in the past the time of philosophers like Socrates and Aristotle, etc. 
they would have allowed to have what we have now. Things would have been very simpler for them. But God has given all that philosophy, all that knowledge, all that wisdom, just in a book called the Bible. It gives you everything. Just all we need is to immerse in it, meditate on it, contemplate it, and put it into practice. And that way we can love both God and our fellow human beings. Today we'll see some of the scriptures, how we can get that. Now in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16, they were longing for a better country to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. See, it was a kind of a practice always to go to a place where it's all good for the physical eyes, but not for the spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes, where we can go, is where God gives us, gives us that hope of eternity in love, the paradise. In, we need to have that faith in God and go to that place. But we see in the Old Testament how God wanted them, people, to come to him at least three times in a year. Three times in a year they have to come, take some rest and celebrate the feast for a period of time. The three feasts, the three times God wanted, as we see in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, feast of unleavened bread, feast of the weeks, and feast of booths. And every time we celebrate this feast, every human person is expected to come with something, not empty-handed. But that was a physical celebration of feast. But now we are celebrating the spiritual feast. The spiritual feast of thanksgiving. We have to take with us everything. What we have. What we do not have. What we want to give away. What we want to seek from God. Everything. And the biggest and the greatest feast of our present time is the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is the place where we celebrate the feast every time because heaven and earth come together. The human person of Jesus and the divinity of Jesus all is experienced at one time. It is for the past, present and the future. The Holy Eucharist is the strength. It's the strength where all the people can return to it. To seek God once again in Mount Calvary. Once again to go through that, hear that word of God, the road to Emmaus. How Jesus explained Cleopas and his companion. God's plan of salvation from the beginning. And then he came and broke the bread. So that is what is important. So that is the pilgrim's return now. The pilgrim's progress, yes, we have seen in John Bunyan's, which how we can come across the various trials, temptations. And the trials give us the perseverance and the perseverance give us, make us mature and complete. And once we make become mature and complete, we will lack nothing. Likewise, if we come to the Holy Eucharist, we need to bring all our Problems, worries, surrenders, everything. Because Jesus consumes us. He makes us. His body, his hands, his feet, his eyes, his mouth. To go out and share that love. So he makes each one as Jesus Christ. To go and spread this message of love to every person who, are, who do not know him. Now, in Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 4, the author cries out, nobody comes to the feet, feast. The people are slowly going away. What God had commanded them to come to him, to read the word of God and to offer him those sacrifices. People have slowly stopped doing that. And that's what the writer laments. And in Ezekiel, chapter 46, verse 9, it talks about the way you have to enter God's 
when you go there to celebrate the feast how we are going to enter what are the different ways we have the labyrinth you know the way the monks the ascetics there used to go through it in praising god and thanking god likewise we see in john chapter 5 verse 1 jesus went up to the feast of the jews so jesus followed it very religiously whatever has to be followed you know that celebrate the three feasts the feast of the booths the feast of uh, uh, the weeks and the feast of the unleavened bread and at seven, and, and in john 7:14 he proclaims the word of god at the, at the midst of the feast jesus went up to teach now in psalms 122 verse 1 to 4 i was glad when they said let us go to the house of the lord so we catholics we are expected at least to do one pilgrimage a year at least one the year where pilgrimage is where we focus completely leaving out our rest of our lives the physical lives we focus only for our spiritual wealth at least once in a year we do that we have been asked to do it and yes when we were children our parents made sure that we had that pilgrimage every year and that's how it has caught up with us, it has stayed with us. But then, when you look at the modern digital world, that is slowly eroding away. That They are telling it is traditional, it's for people of ancient people and not for us. But then that has to change. When we change that, then is the time we can seek God's providence. God will be pleased to us when we take the time of Him. That will strengthen our relationship with him god doesn't change he is always the same but we as human beings when we take time from our regular things and focus on him we get uplifted and we will be drawn to him and we will rely on him for everything and anything rather than depending on our strength which is weak and frail and we will fail now in psalm 84 chapter 5 uh, chapter 84 verse 5 blessed is the man whose heart are the highways to zion zion or jerusalem is supposed to be the holiest well, so all the roads focus to zion or jerusalem in the spiritual world but a person who is always thinking about the spiritual well-being of his soul is blessed and that's what the psalmist sings now in Micah chapter 4 verse 2, many nations will say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now there are many nations who are saying, yes, we need the spiritual well-being of the human soul is very important. Now, let's focus on that. Because when a situation like this pandemic, COVID-19 comes up, it just halts everything. Nothing can go, everything can stop. So we have to focus, this is the time we need to come back and you know, in our rooms and offer everything to God and surrender to him, surrender our free will to him and acknowledge him that he is our great God. Now in Acts chapter 2 verse 5 to 11, we see the time of the Holy Spirit when it came on the apostles and how they went and spoke. People were bewildered. They were stunned. How can these people just being Galileans speak so many languages? That's because they return to our God. The pilgrims return to the spiritual well-being of the people. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3, they used to go have this practice of the pilgrimage. They used to go from one city to the place called Shiloh to worship the Lord. Because the Lord's temple was there and the Lord's presence was there, therefore physically they used to move. But Again, when you look at the spiritual world, our spiritual being should always be there. At some point in our time, in, our, in, in every year, in, in our daily, everyday living, we need to take some time off to look for the spiritual. We can't be just working all the 24 hours for our physical well-being. We need to work for our spiritual well-being. Even if you take 10%, two and a half hours in 24 hours if you are working, or if you are working only 10 hours, 1 hour of time for our spiritual well-being. If we can immerse that 1 hour in the word of God, 
contemplate and seek him, everything will change. We will be transformed. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 to 16, the desire a better country, he has prepared a city for them. So God is always waiting. His city of joy, his city of happiness, his city of pleasantness is waiting. All we have to do is to surrender to him. If not, Jesus would not have said that, you know, I go before you, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I'm going there to prepare for you. So we need to surrender to him. That place is the ultimate place for us. So our spiritual being is what we should be focused for. Whatever we do on this physical lives, it should be to enhance our spiritual wealth and not our physical wealth, which would rust and which would get destroyed. Only if we love whatever we have, if we become stewards of what we have and share with our fellow human beings, our time, talent and treasure. That would increase our spiritual well-being. Now, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 12, we see that very kind of strange uh, topic, but then it, it, it speaks for the present day times. Matthew 19, verse 12, for there are eunuchs, some are born like that, some have been made to be like that by men, which is very, very uh, condemnable and also it's very, very uh, displeasing and it's to God. And it is also not the love to a fellow human being, which we are not showing there. And also some make themselves eunuchs. They don't want to have, because they want to think beyond the physical lives. Therefore, they become eunuchs. And then they serve God with their heart, mind and soul. Because in the spiritual being, in the spiritual world, we do not have gender, either male or female. So it doesn't really matter in the spiritual if you are focusing on. So there is a lot of hope in this passage. Matthew chapter 19 verse uh, 12. That some eunuchs, they have made themselves eunuchs just to please God. And that's great. Now, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, Peter tells this to Jesus. Behold, we have left everything, Lord, for you. What do we get? And Jesus tells them they will get many folds because they are already returning to him. Our main returning is to Jesus. If we return to him, that's our pilgrims return to him. Going through all this world, enjoying everything, within that span of 70, 80, 90, 100 years and coming to him. That's the pilgrim's return. Surrendering our free will and increasing our spiritual wealth. That will take us to eternity. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, if we believe that our father Creator God is an impartial judge. Let us conduct ourselves in fear during the time of our stay here on this physical world. So if we consider we have the Almighty Father, we need to conduct ourselves and see how best we can serve our fellow human beings. And that is our pilgrim's return. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye now.